you to your place of destiny. So with me, God is great. If you want a title for this message, it goes like this. This God is my God. So it means this God is my God. The God you just sang about that is great is your God. Look at someone, tell them, He is your God. Tell the next one, He is your God. I want you to understand something this morning. I want you to know that there is a God that is greater and bigger than anything in this world. I truly pray you can believe the way I believe. I pray to God Almighty that somehow something that God has put in me will be released into your life that you can just believe on this God. So it me, God is God. And there is no one like him. Our problem is that we don't know God. Our problem in this country is that we don't really know God. Many of us play church. If you know God, if you truly know God, if you truly have, have an experience with God Almighty, and you know the God I'm talking about, the God of Spirit Temple Bible Church, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of heaven, if you know that God, there is nothing that can be impossible before you. Say with me, this God of heaven is my God. In the beginning of this year, the Lord really just dealt with me. He said, let them know they have to know the God, the God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of the Bible. If you know the real God of the Bible, and you believe in the God of the Bible, 2015 will be a year of real divine restoration and open doors. Somebody shout, Amen. Oh, the problem is that many people don't really know God. Many of you have not really experienced God. In fact, I'm going to share this. Uh, I have been debating with God. God, should I share this or not? And God had me write it down so I can share it with you. Something happened to me last Sunday. I don't know if many of you were here last Sunday. I said, God, what exactly is the meaning of that? Because that was differently, different from what had happened previously. You understand, something happened also to me, if you remember, in the hotel. I don't know if you were there. Something similar, but this was stronger. Somebody say stronger. Say stronger. Now let me tell you what the Lord asked me to share with you, then I will go right into the message. What you experience, now this is speaking to me. And it has something to do with you and to do with the whole region. What you experienced on Sunday, December 27, 2014, is me releasing upon you a higher level of anointing and boldness. Anointing for dominion and authority. I have placed you as the gatekeeper in this region. I've given you authority within the heavenly host. Over all the forces of darkness in the region. Anyone that was bound by demonic or cultic manipulation can be released as you declare the word of freedom. There are no hindrances before you. 
the heaven is open. All those that align with you, with, with you will experience open heaven as they are as they are released into another dimension of the supernatural. Sicknesses that are caused by mnemonic activities has already succumbed to your God giving dominion. Sicknesses caused by other means will quickly obey your commands. You can now release on hungry men and women the first and second dimension of the anointing upon their lives by the laying of hand. I have sent you to take over and bring about a shake up in the kingdom of darkness. The demonic strongholds that refuses or they are upset about the mandate would have to relocate from the region. Otherwise, they have to remain powerless and obey your command in the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Now that was the word that the Lord gave me in reference to what happened. 27th of December 2014 something similar happened about the same time last year that launched this ministry to another level why do I have to share this the Lord said share this even though I didn't want to share this he said share it Say, write it down and share it the way I have told you about it this God is our God. The God that you serve. The God that you need to believe in. The God of heaven. Is your God. So with me, I have a God. That controls. Heaven. And earth. And that God. Is my God. I pray that by the end of this service that something supernatural will be released into your life that you walk out of your boat like a lion. And when the enemy sees you, he runs away. No more will you run from the enemy. The enemy was designed and meant to run away from you. Because when you are filled with the presence of God, the devil runs away. Somebody say amen. amen. Who told you you have to remain like you were years ago? Things are different now. Look at someone tell them, things are different now. Say it again, things are different now. I know my God. The Bible says, He, those that know their God, shall do what? Exploit. Those that know their God shall be strong. And they shall do exploit. If you know your God, you will be strong. The only reason why most of us are not strong because you don't know the God you serve. Who rashake? Some of us that came from other countries where we know the existence of God. See, there are gods here too. We prayed last week. I mean, I mean, I will go there. There are gods here too. The, the demonic forces that people actually worship. There are gods. Even God says there are gods. God said, thou shalt not serve any other gods beside me. So God acknowledges there are other gods. But your God is stronger and bigger than any other God. Somebody say amen. amen. I want you to start 2015 with the boldness knowing the Bible says, he that is with God is the majority. God is with you. You have to be as bold. You see, boldness comes as a result of knowing who you are and who is beside you. When you know the God of heaven stands beside you, you are as bold as a lion. You can walk, oh my God, thank you, Jesus. 
What I'm happy about, the Lord told me. I've actually, somebody actually said it also. On Friday prayer, somebody came here for prayer on Friday. And he was sharing some of what I already written down. He was telling me and First Lady, this is what the Lord told him. I said, I, I know already. Somebody else again told us the same thing the guy was saying. When I went somewhere, one Spanish church, somewhere I was invited to. I'm not sure if any of you here were in that Spanish gathering church. But the guy said, this, this man of God said to me, there are no hindrances before me. And I declare that to you. There are no hindrances before you. Somebody say amen. amen. Everywhere you need to be, you will be. Amen. Nothing would stop you. Look at someone, tell them, I am unstoppable. I am unstoppable. Tell the next one, I am unstoppable. I am unstoppable. Yes. Okay, let's read the scriptures. Psalms. 48, verse 14. For this God, for this God is our God. You see, when you are, when, when your eyes are open, when you have your eyes open to see, the force of that. See, many of you don't see. If you can see what is around you, you would run to this house whenever these doors are open. Many of you don't see. I pray that God opens your eyes so you can see. If you can see what is working around you, you will, every day of your life, you would be running constantly under the rock. This God is our God. For whenever and whenever he is our guide even to the end. This God, this God of heaven. That's why in 2015 you better give your life to this God. of playing church as usual is over. It's about time to, to begin to move up to the place of your destiny in God. Is enough time playing church, going up and down, everything, nothing working for you, and you think it's just normal. Your papa went through the same thing. Your grandpa, the same problem. You're going through the same problem, and you think it's just the way it is. That is a lie from the pit of hell. That needs to stop. It can only stop when you know your God. Your father was a drunkard. You too, now you are a drunkard. Your grandpa was a womanizer. You can't see a woman under the skirt. Your grandmama was a whatever they do. And you always gravitate in that direction. Your grandpapa always drink and smoke. And you see yourself doing the same thing. And you think it is normal. Say with me, that must stop. stop. You cannot be like your papa. I'm a Christian. I met a Christian a couple of days ago. And I looked at him, what he was telling me. He told me, you know, my blood pressure runs in my family. He said, my grandpa had it. And my papa had it. My mother is even worse. I even have it too. But I take a little dose of medicine. I said, the devil is a liar. How can you? Jesus. Just because your grandpa had it and your mama and papa had it doesn't mean you have to accept it. So I refuse. So I refuse. To be sick. Jesus. This God, and for God to manifest in your life, and in your circumstances, and in your situation, you have to 
I will use this word, invoke. Somebody say invoke. invoke. Say it again. Invoke. Say it one more time. Invoke. Because the Bible says, God said, I have given you dominion over the works of my hands. Look at someone, tell them you have dominion. Over everything that God has made. So if you want God to be in your affairs, if you want God to get in your business, you got to call on him. Are you getting me? You got to invoke his presence. You got to invoke his person. You got to invoke God. Somebody say invoke God. So the Bible says that this God of heaven is our God. God is our God. The incarnate God is your God. The redeeming God is your God. The covenant keeping God is your God. A God that keeps covenant. The Bible says in Psalm 89 verse 4. Verse 89 verse 4. The Bible says, my, the Lord says, my covenant, I will not break or alter the words of my mouth. So 89 verse 4. 89 verse 4. My covenant will I not break nor alter the words of my mouth. Amen? Amen. So 89 verse 4. Is that what it is? Sorry, 89 verse 34. 89 verse 34. 89 verse 34. I will not break my covenant or alter my lips. Alter what my lips have already what? Altered. I mean, whatever thing God says, you can bank on it. I mean, if you trust God with all of your heart, put your hands down. My desire and prayer is that you trust God that he is with you more than you trust the very air that you breathe. That you trust God. That you believe that God is, is, is God. And because God is God, there is nothing any mortal man can do to you. The Bible says, if God is for you, who can be against you and succeed? They may be against you, but they cannot succeed. Amen? The Bible says, they shall gather, but they shall surely scatter. Anyone that comes against you, the Bible says they will scatter. They will gather, but they will scatter. If you believe the God of heaven, anyone that come against you in 2015, the Bible says they will scatter. If you let me hear you say amen. amen. They may come against you at work, but they will scatter. They may come against you at your apartment, but they will be scattered. They may come against you because of your promotion, but they will be scattered. Anyone that tries to come against you in 2015, I declare by the auction of the Holy Ghost that they will scatter in the name of Jesus. Any man or woman who try to plan and cohort against, against you, who does wish for your downfall, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, they will live and see you rise to the top. Somebody say amen. amen. Whoever is wishing that you never make it, I declare that God keep them alive so they can see you making it big. Somebody say amen. I pray that God will keep your enemies alive so they can see God bless you. We don't want your enemies dead. Let them be alive and powerless and let them see you. The Bible says in the book of Psalm, He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. The table 
what the Lord prepares is very exciting and yummy and delicious when enemies are watching you eat it from that table. If, the, if your enemies are dead, what is the point? Let them see you eating. So they will, they will wish they never came against you. Amen? The Lord has told me to speak to you this morning that many of you here tonight, many of you here this morning will rise up to the high table. And those enemies have to sit below you to see you at the high table. And you have no choice but to clap your hands for you. Somebody say amen. amen. So 2015, as long as you are connected to the God of heaven and to the anointing that flows in this house, there shall be nothing that the enemy can put on you that will stick to you. In 2015, everything that you have lost for the last five years will be miraculously restored. Why? Because God is a God of miracles. So with me, God is a God of miracles. So with me, my God is a God of miracles. So the God of miracles is my God. Psalm 77 verse 14. The God of miracles is my God. The God of miracles is my God. Psalm 77, verse 14. You are the God who what? Performs miracles. I don't know if you need a miracle in your life. Then tag onto that God. You know what tagging means? Many of you are Facebook, you tag somebody. Hold on to him. 2015 should not be like last year. Hold on to God. Make up your mind. I met a leader of a church in, in, in uh, this leader, is, you have a church in Reading. And he told me, you know, pastor, you know, I'm a leader in my church, you know, but I really can't let go everything. I said, why? He said, because I still like, you know, some stuff. So no wonder you have all these problems happening in your church. How can you not let go and expect the people in your church to let go? It begins from the head. If the head don't let go, because you, I cannot give you what I don't have. I cannot release on your life what, what has not manifested in my life. And the Bible says that your God, say my God, my God. say my God, my God. Performs, miracles. performs miracles. Say my God, my God. will display Jose. his power, his power. In, my in my life this year, this year. in Jesus' name. In Jesus. And somebody say amen. amen. So this God is a God of miracles. You see, you have to believe like I believe, truly. Just believe this thing. With ev I say it all the time because with every fiber of your being, let it just be from your head to your toe. You just believe it. So with me, I believe. You got to believe. You got to believe that the God you serve is a God of miracles. And many of you today would experience some miracles in your life this year. And some of you already started to experience miracles already in your life. Because God is a God of miracles. Somebody say amen. amen. He's a God of miracles. And we serve a God of miracles. This God that we serve, he's a God of miracles. The Bible says the same thing in Psalm 86 verse 10. Psalm 86 verse 10. It says, 
Psalm 86 verse 10. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one like you. That song you just sang, that is where it came from. Say with me, you are great God. You do miracles. There is no one like you. You see, I would like in your life, 2015, to be marked with supernatural miracles. Somebody say amen. amen. Let there be miracles upon miracles taking place. Let things that you thought will never come to pass in your life. Let God miraculously do it. Somebody say amen. amen. Because we serve a God that is, does miracles so great. He is a miracle worker. He is a God that cannot be underestimated. The God of heaven. The Bible says, chapter 30, verse 3 of Deuteronomy. 30, verse 3. He said, the God of restoration is your God. Let us read that together. One to go. Read out loud. Amen. Amen. Let's say it one more time. Then the Lord your God would restore. So you serve a God of restoration. Every fortune that you have lost. How many of you lost something? 2010, 2011. Something you lost that you really desired you never lost. How many of you lost something last year? How many of you would like to get back everything that belongs to you that you lost? Now the Bible says right here that the Lord our God would restore. How many of you believe that? That God would restore your fortune. He will restore everything that you lost. He will restore it. So it means he will restore. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. 23. Joel 2, 23. The Bible says, be glad, people of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the awesome rains. Because he is faithful. He sends you abundant shower. Both the autumn and the spring as before. The Bible says in this verse that God would cause the former and the latter rain to fall at the same time in your life. You believe that? The former rain and the latter rain would fall and bring you blessings in one month. There will be a season of harvest where you'll be harvesting everything that was lost in the drought. God is about to release rain. Somebody say rain. rain. Somebody say rain. rain. Now rain denotes blessing. He's about to release his blessing upon your life. About to release the blessings that you've lost upon your life. That the blessing of the latter day and the blessing of the former day will all come together and you will receive restoration and you will get double for your trouble. Somebody shout double for my trouble. Verse 24. 24. Oh, Jesus. 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 And he said, because of what he's going to do in verse 23, the threshing floor will be filled with grain. Grain, grain. The vat will overflow with new wine and oil. Grain seems, speaks of abundance. New wine, the presence of God, the oil, the anointing. The Bible says there will be a release of God's anointing upon your life. A release of God's anointing and power upon your life. Because God is a God of restoration.
salvation. Everything that was meant to be in your life in the last five years, God will bring everything together and bring it together. 2015, you will receive all in the name of Jesus. New wine and oil. The power of God and the anointing of God resting upon your life. He said the vats will overflow. There will be abundance. Don't you ever speak lack in this year. Look at someone, tell them, don't you speak lack in this year. Say, don't you speak lack in this year. Tell them. Say, don't speak scarcity in this year. Tell them that's why I am blessed. I am filled. To overflowing with the love of God, with the peace of God, with the joy of God, with the goodness of God, with the abundance of God, with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, somebody say yes. Verse 25. And I will restore, I will repay you. Ooh, this is God talking. For the years the locust have eaten. The great locusts and the canker worms and the young ones and all other locusts. All the locusts that are swimming. The ones that fly and the ones that walk and the ones that swim. Everything the enemy has stolen. God said he will replace it. He will restore everything back to you. Why? Because our God is a God of restoration. Say, my God, my God is a God, God of restoration. restoration. Somebody say, amen. amen. Our God is a God of restoration. The God of open doors. Chapter 3 of Revelation, verse 7 and 8. God said, I will open the door. And no one can shut it. Like right now, just in case you don't know, the doors of this church has been opened. And that's why those that came for the first time, that's why you are here. Because the door has been opened. The door was not just open physically. In the spiritual realm, it was open. If you think you are here by accident, you don't know yet. God has brought you here spiritually. He has called you by your name in your spirit. God brought you because the doors are open. Nothing can stop it from happening. Nothing can stop you from coming to the house of God because the doors are open. There are no hindrances. It's like, it's like, a, magnetic, like a magnetic force pulling you to the house of God. Why? Because God wants you to be blessed. He wants you to experience his power, his love, his goodness, his anointing upon your life. The Bible says that the door that Jesus opens, no one can shut it. And the door that is shut, no one can open it. Say with me, this God is my God. This God I'm talking about this morning is your God. And God just told me now, He's about to display His power now in your life. If you're here this morning and you have not yet given your life to this God, this God I'm talking about, not the one you've been messing around with. This one that is the real one. The real God that performs miracles in your very eyes. The real God that does wonders in heaven and on earth below. If you have not yet given your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to pray for you right where you are. If the Pastor Duke, I really want to give my life to Jesus. I tried it one time 
and I just messed up and went my way. But this time, as you are speaking, it's like God is speaking to me to surrender my life to him. If that is you, you want to give your life to Jesus, slip up your hand very quick. That's one. Two. Come on, hurry up quickly. Stand up if you're the one. Get up. Stand up, brother. Lift up your hand and stand up. Stand up, stand up. That's fine. Amen. That's okay, brother. Stand up. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Anyone else? Do it quickly. As you remain standing, God bless you, sister. God bless you too. This is not to embarrass you, but it's to take a bold step. You know what? Jesus, I am coming hard after you. You see, brother, sisters, there was a time I made up my mind. I made up my mind. My degrees means nothing to me. I made up my mind. Even having my doctorate degree means nothing to me. I made up my mind. I'm going to follow Jesus. I said, you know what? I will let go of everything else and follow him hard. And you have made the right decision today, three of you. Yes. Come forward, quick, please. I got to pray for you. Come forward. Clap your hand for them. Come forward. Come forward. Come forward. Everyone, please rise. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. This is the best decision you have made. I made it one time. And I'm glad you're doing it right now. Because you're already stepping in to a new level. What you're doing right now, I did it myself at one time in my life. And I'm glad you are doing it right now because something's about to change. You see, one thing the enemy already knows, I told him, if you don't want to remain in this region and be quiet, relocate. Because it can't stop you, you, you from doing what you're doing right now. Lift up your hands and just repeat after me. Audience, please help them. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus. I surrender. My life, my life to you, to you. Dear, Jesus, dear Jesus I acknowledge, I acknowledge that, you that you are king, are king. You, you are Lord, are Lord. You, you are my savior, are my savior. Please, please forgive me forgive of, my of my sins please, please come into my life, into my life. Be, my be my Lord be my, Lord. Be my savior be my I need you I need you, I need you. More than ever before, come into my life right now, right now, in Jesus' name, amen. Give the clap to the Lord. Welcome, brother. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, brother. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome to the family. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is just the beginning of what God, that my God, Pastor, you might say, I need a touch from God. Oh, Jesus. 